Hello everyone, I am Avishek Mandal and this is my presentation on production issues in the manufacturing of titanium aluminite turbine blades by investment casting. Let's start with a bit of history. The research around the first generation of titanium aluminite started after 1950s with the main focus on strength and corrosion resistance up to 750 degrees Celsius. It had good ductility at room temperature. The research for second generation started in 1980s, extending its application beyond 750 degrees Celsius. This was generally manufactured by rapid solidification and rot processing and had five duplex structure with good ductility, strength and oxidation resistance. The research for third generation started in 1990s and it had identified gamma titan aluminides with laminar structure having potential use in engineering applications. Now let's see some of its uses. With properties similar to super alloys and density being half of the nickel based super alloy, it is being used to make low pressure turbine blades for GE and X family of gas turbine engines by General Electrics. It is used by Mistibushi to make turbocharger rotor wheels. It is also used to make engine valves for Formula 1 engines. All these components are being produced by investment casting, ingot metallurgy and powder metallurgy but it requires post-processing like hot isostatic pressing, heat treatment and hot working. Let us now see the experimental setup. The blades are produced by induction melting of titanium, aluminum, chromium and niobium. A mold is prepared by the factory material using an ABS modeled blade. Then the molten metal is cast into the rotating mold. For metallographic analysis, the blades are ground to a mirror-like finish using silicon carbide papers from 120 to 1200 followed by polishing using 0.3 micron alumina. It was etched by using colorless reagent. Finally, the structure and fracture surface were inspected using SM and EDS. Now let us see how the blades were manufactured. Since titanium aluminide has poor oxidation resistance, about 900 degrees Celsius, it was considered to make turbine blades only for the first stage of gas turbine with an inlet temperature of 850 degrees Celsius. Other parameters were chosen according to this data similar to an actual machine of this type. From this data, the velocity triangles of the hub, the tip and the average height of the blade were constructed. From the velocity triangles, the blade profile was developed. Since the centrifugal forces on the blades are very high, the fixing system used is a fish tree root with four lobes and the double dovetail roots. The geometric model of the blade made in CAD software also included riser since it would be the master pattern for the mold. The thermal modules of different sections were calculated so that there is directional solidification towards the riser. The CAD model was then fed to a maker bot replicator 2x for 3D printing using a ABS as the prototype material with 100 micron layer thickness. The last two pictures at the bottom show the 3D printing of the blade at two different instances. After the blade was manufactured, the prototype was cleaned with an acetone soaked cloth to reduce surface roughness. Some smaller dimension turbine blades were also created using Inconel 718 alloy. By using the ABS model and the Inconel model, negative silicon rubber molds were prepared to produce the wax model. A refractory material resistant to high temperature was used to make the mold. After drying the mold, it was baked in a furnace with a thermal cycle. It started with heating it up to 250 degrees Celsius and remaining at this temperature for 30 minutes. Then heating it up to 900 degrees Celsius and remaining at this temperature for 30 minutes. Then it was cooled back down to 450 degrees Celsius until it was casted. The blades were then cast in a centrifugal induction furnace in a controlled atmospheric vacuum. When the mold was cooled, the refractory material around the casting was mechanically removed and the riser was cut using a diamond cutter. The picture here shows the mold after it has been cooled. Coming to the problems during manufacturing, we noticed that a strong reactivity occurs when the molten metal strikes the mold at high speed at temperature above 700 degrees Celsius. For this reason, a protective coating of boron nitride or alumina was applied on the mold cavity surface. Results obtained from boron nitride were not good since it prompted the formation of reactive layer on the blade which was difficult to remove. 
alumina gave better results. But the blades had visible surface protrusions due to reaction of the alloy with the mold refractory material. To remove the residual refractory material from the blade surface, an ultrasonic cleaning process was carried out followed by grinding to remove coarse protrusions. In order to improve the surface finish, more research has to be done on the refractory material which is less aggressive to molten metal. Some of the barrel finished blades show smooth and work hardened surface. Then a microscopic characterization of the alloy was carried out. The metallographic analysis show that the microstructure of the alloy has fine laminar colonies of alpha 2 and gamma and gamma grains. The EDS shows the composition of two different blades. The difference in composition is due to the difficulty in avoiding aluminum evaporation during casting. Considering the fractured behavior, some plates fractured at the hub area under impulsive load due to design of the alloy and brittleness of the alloy. As a remedy in areas of greater stresses and stress intensification due to the blade profile, the thickness must be increased to obtain a lower curvature at the connection between the airfoil and the platform. The blade produced did not show any relevant quantities of micro shrinkage cavities or macroscopic internal defects. Coming to the characterization of fracture surface, the micrographs from the SEM show a typical cleavage fracture. There are areas where the fracture propagates through the gamma phase and areas with translamellar fracture, which is evident from these two micrographs. The lower edge of the airfoil is the area where the fracture initiates. In this area, there are micro shrinkage defects which contribute to the stress intensification and crack initiation. In inner parts of the blade also show micro shrinkage cavities which are less critical for fracture propagation. For the conclusion, we can conclude that selection of the process parameter in blade manufacturing stage is very critical. Casting temperature and cooling rate should be carefully chosen. Mold material is very important to get a good surface finish. The protrusions should be removed in the post processing steps and structural improvements should be done at the radius of the edge at the contact between the airfoil and the root. Thank you.